We are the Gujarat Technological University. Since its inception over a decade ago, GTU has been empowering young and curating minds to realize their true potential. Over 4 lakh inspired students are enrolled with one of the premier academic universities in India. With more than 450 affiliated colleges in its fold operating across 5 zones of the state, GTU, the International Innovative University, your place to move forward. Hello friends, myself assistant professor Watson Lee Patel from civil engineering department working at Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technical Education and Research Center Nausari. Today we are going to discuss about construction equipment. So in the case of huge construction project, proper use of the appropriate equipment contributes to the economy, quality, safety, speed and timely completion of a project. Equipments are used for highway projects, irrigation, building and power projects etc 50 to 30 percentage of the total project cost has been accounted towards the equipment and machinery so classification of construction equipment earth moving equipment hauling equipment hoisting equipment conveying equipment aggregate and concrete production equipment pile driving equipment tunneling and rock drilling equipment pumping and dewatering equipment so, operation involved in construction of any projects are excavation, digging of large quantity of earth, moving them to distances which are sometimes fairly long, placement, compacting, leveling, dosing, grading, and holding. Excavating and earth moving equipments, which are mainly known one are power shovel, backhoe, drag line clamshell, scrapers and bulldozer. So first we will see power shovel. To excavate the earth and to load the trucks it is used. Capable of excavating all type of earth except the hard rock. Size varies from 0.375 meter cube to 5 meter cube. Basic parts of power shovel including the truck system, cabin, cables, rack, stick, boom, foot pin, saddle block, boom, boom point, sieves and bucket. Applications are suitable for close range of work, capable of digging very hard material, can remove big size boulders. It is used in various types of jobs such as digging in gravel banks, clay pits, digging cuts in roadworks, roadside beam, etc. So factor affecting output of power shovel, which are class of material, depth of cutting, angle of swing, job condition, management condition, size of hauling unit, skill of the operator, physical condition of the shovel. So here you can see old one and the new one in the image. In new one you can see pulley and chain arrangement is totally removed and pressing arrangement is there. Next one is backhoe. It is also known as hoe back shovel and pull shovel. It is used to excavate below the natural surface on which it rests. Generally used to excavate trenches, pits of basements and also for grading works which require precise control of depths. The basic parts are boom, jack boom, boom foot drum, boom sieves, stick sleeves, stick, bucket and bucket sieve. So here is the image of it. You can see all the component of it in the image. So application of it, it is used the most suitable machine for the digging below the machine level such as trenches, footings, basement, etc. It can be efficiently used to dress or trim the surface avoiding the use of manual efforts for dressing the excavated surface. Next one is drag line. The drag line is so named because of its prominent operation of dragging the bucket against the material to be dug. Unlike the shovel, it has a long light crane boom and the bucket is loosely attached to the boom through the cables. Because of its construction, a drag line can dig and dump over large distances than a shovel can do. Drag lines are useful for digging below its track level and handling softer materials. The basic parts of a drag line including the boom, hoist cable, 
ट्रेक केबल होइस चेन ट्रेक चेन एंड बकेट सो एप्लीकेशन आर इट इज द मोस्ट सुटेबल मशीन फॉर ड्रेगिंग सॉफ्टवेयर मटेरियल एंड बिलो इट्स ट्रेक लेवल इट इज वेरी यूजफुल फॉर एक्सकेवेटिंग ट्रेंचेस व्हेन द साइड्स आर परमिटेड टू एस्टेब्लिश देयर एंगल ऑफ रिपोज विदाउट शोरिंग इट हैज लॉन्ग रीचेस इट इज मोस्टली यूज्ड इन द एक्सकेवेशन फॉर कैनाल एंड डिपॉजिटिंग ऑन द एम्बेडमेंट विदाउट होल्डिंग यूनिट्स so here you can see it in the image all components are there next one is clam cell this is so named due to resemblance of its bucket to a clam which is like a shellfish with hinged double cell the front end is essentially a crane boom with a special designed bucket loosely attached at the end through cables as in a drag line the capacity of a clam cell bucket is usually given in cubic meters The basic parts of camshaft bucket are closing line, hose line, sieves, brackets, tag line, cell and hinge. Application of it are used for handling loose materials such as crushed stone, sand, gravel, coal, etc. Main feature is vertical lifting of material from one location to the another. Mainly used for removing material from coffer dam, sewer main holes, well foundation, etc. So here it's image so here is the table we showed a comparison comparison between different types of equipment so you can see the item which is used for comparison and according to work different different capacity of the equipment is shown in the table and according to this you can see, select it for the excavation in hard soil or rock excavation in wet soil or mud distance between footing and digging loading efficiency footing required digging level and cycle time next one is trenching machine used for excavating trenches for laying pipelines sewer cables etc operation is quick and giving the required depth or width the two types of trenching machine are wheel type and ladder type scrapers unique machine for digging and long distance hauling of pliable materials self operating machine it is not dependent on any other equipment wheels of machine cause some compaction the basic parts of scraper are bowl apron and tailgate or ejector so here you can see it in the image next one is bulldozer the heavy blade attached to the tractor pushes the material from one place to another the tractor can be of the crawler or wheel type classification of bulldozer according to position of blade bulldozer in which the blade perpendicular to the direction of movement angle dozer in which the blade is set at an angle with the direction of the movement second one based on mounting wheel mounted and crawler mounted third one is based on control cable control and hydraulic hydraulically control so here you can see all the components of bulldozer in the image its applications bulldozer are mainly used for the following operations such as for spreading the earth fill for opening a pilot road through the mountains and rocky terrains clearing construction sites maintaining whole roads clearing land from the trees and stumps back filling trenches at construction site by dragging the earth from one place to another next one is tractors multi purpose machine used mainly for pulling and pushing the earth equipment are known as tractor they are mainly classified in two categories clavera type and wheel type so in clavera crawler type tractor used to move bulldozer scraper the crawler has a chain by which this tractor can be very effective even in the case of loose or muddy soil the speed of this type of does not exceed 12 km per hour normally in case of wheel type tractor the engine is mounted on four wheels the main advantage is is higher speed sometimes exceeding 50 km per hour and it is used for long distance hauling and good roads so here you can see crawler type tractor in the image so comparison between crawler and wheel tractor tractors so in crawler tractor speed is slow where in wheel type it is greater in crawler type more compact and powerful 
and can handle heavier jobs whereas wheel type can handle only lighter jobs cable tractors are very costly whereas wheel type are cheaper in case of cable tractor cost of operation and maintenance is high whereas in case of wheel type maintenance cost and operational cost is less in cable type tractor stick is used for is used to control for the steering in case of wheel type there is a wheel steering for the control cable tractor moves on rough roads only where the wheel type tractor moves on rough as well as good roads cable tractor are used for short distance wheel type are used for longer distance in cable type tractor requires skillful operation maintenance and repair whereas in case of wheel type tractor lesser skills required for operation maintenance and repairs next earth compaction equipment smooth wheel roller sheep foot roller it is divided into three category ordinary sheep foot roller convertible roller and turn foot roller and next one is pneumatic tired rollers so in case of smooth wheel rollers plain steel rollers are used self propeller type weighing from 5 to 15 tons used for ordinary rolling work where deep compaction is not required this roller may have one front and two rear wheels the rear wheels being usually larger in diameter and the front one being the wider weight of rollers may be increased by filling water or sand ballast in the hollow cylinder these rollers are effective in compacting granule soil such as sand gravel and crushed stone so here you can see the image of smooth wheel roller next one is ship foot rollers for compacting earthwork in embankments and canals where the compaction deep into the layer of earth is required it is used this gives best result in compaction when the soil is clay or predominantly cohesive and impervious the ship foot rollers may weigh up to 15 tons or more travel at a speed of 25 km per hour as the roller moves over the surface the feet penetrate the soil to produce kneading action and a pressure to mix a compact the soil from bottom to top layer with repeated passages of the roller the penetration of heat decreases so here you can see sheep foot roller next one is pneumatic tired rollers it consists a base or platform mountain between two axles the rear of which has one more wheel than the front most suitable for compacting fine grain soil and well graded sands. Ballasting is done using either water, sand or pig iron in order to increase the self weight. Major advantages are the ability to control the ground contact pressure by altering the weight of machine, increasing the number of wheels, increasing the tire width, changing the contact area of the tire by altering the contact pressure. So here you can see pneumatic tire roller in the image. Next hauling equipment. The equipment used for the transportation of material are known as hauling equipment or simply haulers. Haulers may operate on the roadways or railways. It involves transportation of building materials, carriage and disposal of excavated earth, hauling of heavy construction equipments. These are classified on the basis of method of dumping the load. First one is dump trucks. It is further divided into two categories, side or rear dump trucks and bottom dump trucks and second ones are dumpers. So dump trucks. These are used for earth moving purpose. The selection of type of dump trucks for a specific job depends on the soil condition. So side or rear dump trucks. These are heavy duty trucks with strongly built body which is hinged on the truck chassis at the rear end and the one side respectively and can be fitted to the rear in the case of rear drum and to the hinge side in case of the side drum through the action of hydraulic jacks. These trucks are suitable for use in hauling weight, clay, sand, gravel, quarry rocks etc. So here you can see side drum truck in the image. And here is the rear dump truck. Next one is bottom 
dump trucks. These are similar to semi trailers in which their front is supported on the rear of the hauling tractor and their rear is resting on their own wheels. The body of the trucks remains in the same position and the discharge of the material takes place through the its bottom after opening of two longitudinal gates. The gates are hinged to the sides of the body. These trucks are suitable for use in hauling free flowing material such as sand, gravel, riot, hard clay, etc. So here you can see bottom dump truck in the image. Next one are dumpers. It consists high speed pneumatic wheel trucks. Short changes, strong bodies, loading, hauling and dumping is done very fast as compared to other equipment suitable for short hauls on rough roads, especially where a subtle movement is required. So here you can see dumper in the image. Next, hoisting equipment. Hoisting is the lifting a weight from one location and moving it to another location which is at a reasonable distance. Brick projects such as construction of dam, industrial building, etc. require hoisting equipment. Hoisting equipment includes jacks, winches, chain hoist and cranes. Crane is the only single machine which as a single piece is capable of providing three dimensional movement of a weight. So cranes are broadly classified as stationary or direct cranes, mobile cranes, overhead or gantry cranes, traveler cranes and tower cranes. So direct cranes. Direct cranes consist of a mast, a boom and a bull wheel on which the boom rotates about the vertical axis and guys or supporting members. Electric, electrically operated, diesel operated and diesel electric operated Direct cranes are there. The boom can revolve through 360 degree. This crane is used for heavy loads up to 200 tons. Mobile cranes. These cranes are mounted on mobile unit which is either traveler type or wheel type. Truck cranes have high mobility while the traveler mountain cranes move slowly. Traveler mountain cranes are capable of moving on rough terrain also. So here you can see mobile cranes in the image. Next, overhead or gantry cranes. Large service area, freedom from floor obstruction and freeway mobility, widely used in erection, foundry, steel plants, storage yards, and different types of industrial works. This type of crane consists of two main parts, say example, the bridge and the crab. The bridge consists of two main girders fixed at their end to end and capable of moving on gantry rails. The curb consists of hoisting gear mounted on a frame. The frame itself is mounted on another set of wheels and capable of traveling across the main girder. So you, you, here you can see the schematic diagram of overhead crane. Next, traveler cranes. Traveling or bridge cranes have their curves moving on girders which are supported on legs instead of an overhead gantry track are used in overhead cranes. The legs are capable of moving on track laid on the floor. Tower crane. Tower cranes are actually a direct crane mounted on a steel tower. Tower cranes are usually used for industrial and residential high rise buildings. These are commonly used for assembly of industrial plant with the steel structure. The main part of tower crane are under carriage, slavering platform, tower with operators cabin and jeeps. The tower has a truss structure welded from steel bars and channels. So here you can see schematic diagram of tower crane. Each and every component is seen, shown in the figure. Next one is conveying equipment. Transporting material from one place to another over a stationary structure is called conveying equipment. Carries material in continuous stream with its distinct features such as endless chain or say belt can be done horizontally, vertically or inclined. When the equipment does horizontal conveying, it is known as conveyor and when it does vertically, it is known as the elevator. Conveying are mainly used in mining, construction and in some of the industry. In construction industry, conveyors are mainly used for the Concreting purpose. 
So utility or said advantages of using conveyors are as follows. It increases the output. It facilitates the continuity in operation. It results in time saving and there are no waiting periods. Next, some of the popular conveyor are as follows. Belt conveyors, crew conveyor, bucket conveyor and aerial transport. So first one is belt conveyor. Used when large quantity of material have to be conveyed over a long distance as fast as possible and as speedy as possible. It consists of a belt running over a pair of end drums or pulley and supported at the regular interval by the series of rollers called idlers. The idlers are supported on a conveyor frame. The middle sack provided in the belt prevent the slipping of the material. Generally, rubber is most commonly used as a conveyor belt. So here you can see schematic diagram of belt conveyor. Next the advantages of using the belt conveyor. It can handle light as well as heavy material, dry or wet, fine or coarse etc. It can use for distances to convey several thousand tons of material per hour and for distances of distances of several kilometers. It can carry material horizontally or inclined. It is lighter in weight than other conveyors. It gives control discharge of material and discharge can be controlled by the speed of the belt. Next one is crew conveyor. Widely used for handling granule and pulverized material. The quantity of material conveyed is less compared to the conveyor but at the same time the cost is also less. A screw conveyor consists of a helix mounted on a bearing at the ends and the intermediate points and it is driven by a motor from one end. The material entered through at the one end is carried and to the other end by screwing action of helix. The length of the conveyor is about 65 meter with inclination up to a maximum of 350. Next one here you can see schematic diagram of screw conveyor. Next bucket conveyor. It has buckets in the shape of V which are open at the top. This may be feeder loaded or may drag in a vertical movement or along an incline. The length of this type of conveyor are generally limited to 25 meter due to the weight of the conveyor and the strength of the chain. This type of conveyor is mainly used in coal handling where bucket elevators carry the material vertically. So here you can see bucket conveyor in the image. Next aerial transport. Aerial transport through cableways, ropeways and tramways often used with advantages of transportation for material in hilly region reducing the distance of transportation as well as cost of transportation. The load being passed over intermediate towers or stations for long distances. So here you can see image of aerial transport, aggregate and concrete production equipment. Aggregate has to be produced at the site the, if the quantity in it is is very large. Therefore, if any project where concrete requirement is very high, an aggregate preparation and processing plant is essential to complete the concreting equipments or operations. Aggregate production consists of two stages in recovery and processing. Basic materials such as stone is recovered from a rock quarry or from the riverbed and processing is done which consists of crushing, grading, washing and stock wheeling of the aggregate. Aggregate production equipment. Crushers are used mainly to reduce the size of large stone or rock to smaller uniform size aggregate required for the concrete mix. Crusher consists of pressure, impact, adhesion, a combination of these operation. Next one are jaw crushers. It is one of the primary crushers. It operates by allowing stone to flow into the space between two jaws, one of which is stationary and other is movable, which together constitute the crushing surfaces. The distance between two jaws decreases as the stone travels downwards under the effect of gravity and ultimately passes through the lower openings. The movable jaw is capable of exerting a pressure sufficiently high to crush the hardest rock. 
the movable jaw is suspended from a shaft mounted on bearings on the crusher frame. The jaw plates are made of a manganese steel which can be removed, replaced or reversed. So here you can see schematic diagram of jaw crushers. Next, gyratory crushers. In this is another type of primary crusher. Crushers. This type of crusher comprises a hardened steel head has a long conical shape with a throw shaft suspended in a bearing at the top and the eccentric base connection connected to the gears. Thus, as the cone is rotated, the gap between itself and the walling changes from maximum to minimum for each cycle. The rock is fit into the chamber at the top and as it moves downwards, crushing is done and finally emerges through the bottom gap. The size of this type of crusher is the width of the receiving opening measured between the concaves and the crusher head. It is available in size varying from 20 cm to 200 cm. So here you can see schematic diagram of it. Next, cone crusher. Cone crusher are used as secondary or territory crushers. These crushers are capable of producing large quantities of uniformly fine crushed stone. It has a shorter cone with smaller inlet and outlet opening as compared to the gyratory crushers. So here you can see schematic diagram of cone crusher. Next one is roll crusher. Roll crusher are also one of the secondary or territory crushers. This crusher consists of a heavy cast iron frame equipped with the two counter rotating rollers mounted on a separate horizontal shaft. The crushed rock from the primary crusher is fit through the gap between the two rollers for the crushing further. Usually one roller has a fixed axis while the other can be adjusted to give the required setting. The crusher is compact, lightweight and low in cost. So here you can see schematic diagram and real life image of roll cursor. Next one is hammer mill. Hammer mill is one of the impact crusher mostly used as primary or secondary crusher. It consists of a housing frame, a horizontal shaft extending through the frames, number of frames and hammers attached to the frame and a one more hard steel breaker plates. As the stone is fed to the mill, the hammers which are driven by a motor move at a high speed and break the stone into pieces and driving them against the hard plate further reduces their size. So here you can see schematic diagram of hammer mill. Next road mill and ball mill. These are the territory crusher. A road mill consists of a circular steel cell. The interior of the cell is lined on the inside with a hard material wearing surface. The cell contains a number of steel rods. The length of this road is slightly less than the length of the cell. Crushed stone is fed through the inlet and fine aggregate of the size of sand is discharged at the another end. If the roads are placed by steel walls to provide impact required to grind the stones, the crusher is known as the ball mill crusher. The size of ball generally used is 50 mm in diameter. So here you can see the image of road mill and ball mill. Next concrete production plant. For mixing different ingredients in required proportion, it consists of storage bins for storing materials like cement and admixture. Aggregate is mixed in it with the help of hopper which is fixed in plant. So here you can see schematic diagram of concrete production plant. Next pile driving equipment. The process of pile driving involves lifting the piles into position holding it to refusal or to a specified depth. Driving is accomplished through the hammering the pile top with a hammer. Equipment are so designed for driven effectively at an economical cost. Major pile driving equipment are pile driving rings and pile driving hammers. So here you can see pile driving equipment in the image. So here I end my session. Thank you all of you.